Welcome back, book lovers. Craig's Book Thoughts, episode four. Today, we're going horror. We're going proper horror. I'm going to review a graphic novel and a novel tie-in as well. I'm going to say one word to you, and don't run away, don't switch off, and that's vampires. But trust me, these are very cruel, evil vampires. This isn't no twilight nonsense where they're shimmering and glittering around the place. This is vampires, as in my opinion, they're supposed to be, which is badass, take no names, scary as hell. The name of the series, 30 Days of Night. I don't know whether you're familiar with this series. Here is the first book. Yeah, that ain't no Twilight cover right there, is it? Not that there's anything wrong with Twilight. I did enjoy the series and the films as well, but a lot of people have said, you know, you, you've got to make vampires scary again. You can't, you can't just go making them all shimmery and glittery. 30 Days a Night, written by Steve Niles and illustrated by the amazing Ben Templesmith. His style is just incredible. Very visceral, very graphic, very almost sort of childlike, scratchy sort of textures. Uh, very similar to Dave McKean. Massive inspiration to me growing up. Uh, was Dave McKean through my various design courses as well. Everyone wanted to do uh, illustrations like Dave McKean's covers. Him and Ben Templesmith, just amazing artwork. Ben could illustrate any story and just make it look really, really cool. So, the story. So the story is set in a very, very remote town called Barrow in Alaska. Now, for 30 days, every single year, there's no sunlight. It's complete darkness. The snow is horrific, the conditions are terrible, it's a very, very small community in Barrow. They all live in the, in this small town, everyone knows each other, and they call the 30 days of night every year the dark. So some people can't cope, they're just completely freaked out, as you would expect, with not having sun for 30 days. They flee, they leave the town. Others stay because of business, or just because they don't mind that sort of harsh conditions. And basically it starts with the town sheriff called Eben Olsen. Now Eben is a very sort of hard character, but he's got a soft side as well. You know, he's firm but fair, I think that's the best way to put him. So Eben's on his runs, just getting ready uh, basically for lockdown. You know, everything's got to be tightened down. Um, the dark is about to happen. We're a day before the start of the 30 days um, and a stranger comes to town. He starts to make a bit of trouble, and then a lot of mysterious things start happening. Dogs get killed. I don't want to spoil a lot for you, but a lot of strange things happen, and it all builds up to vampires come into the town, basically. A group of vampires, they don't speak our language, so they've got this kind of guttural tone about them, and they have used the 30 days of night as a perfect excuse for killing spree. So those that have left the town... Thank God, because the people who are left just get slaughtered and hunted and maimed. These vampires are fast and vicious. Their claws can rip through anything, their teeth as well. They've got black eyes, which is really cool. They look like humans, but they are superhuman strength and speed. And I know that sounds corny. Even as I'm saying it and I was watching it, you think, oh, God, all right, superhuman speed. No, these are incredible. They are scary, scary things. So this is some of the art that you can expect from this series. But I have never, ever read a series where the story and the art go so well together. I've explained in my first two videos how much I love Sin City. The writing and the artwork by Frank Miller is perfect. But this, I mean, look at them. Ben Templesmith is just a genius. Right by here. You don't need dialogue again, there's no dialogue, but you are just drawn into this world. These characters are vicious. You are literally scared for your life for these characters. So they, they are the main vampires in this story. I'm just going to find some more artwork as well. <laughs> there you go. So, right by here, that is the head vampire. He's got Marlowe. He wears this long trench coat, very smart suit, bald head. He's bigger than the other vampires, and everyone is scared of him. They all look up to him, they do whatever the hell he wants, and you just 
you just feel scared just watching him and reading this story. So basically, as I said, all these events start to happen. Eben makes his way back to the sheriff's station uh, and he finds out that his ex-wife Stella is actually in town. She didn't mean to be in town. She missed her last flight out of Barrow. She didn't want to be there. She is stuck there now for 30 days and she is just so annoyed because everyone used to know her. You know, Barra's a very small town. She didn't want to bump into Eben. She wanted to just leave. Um, and he goes and picks her up and then it all it all kicks off. This stranger is part of this vampire clan and, yeah, they're just being picked off. But because Eben is the sheriff of the town, it's his responsibility to look after the people. Barrow is his town. He loves the town. A lot of people can't live in the harsh conditions of Alaska. He thrives on it. These are his people. He needs to take care of them and look after them. So he forms a group, or he gets as many people as he can, including his brother Jake, and they go on the run. So they go hiding under crawl spaces in houses, in attics... They wait for blizzards just so they can run out and get food supplies and stuff like that that they need because they're going to be hidden by the snow. And you feel so tense. You feel part of this group. And, and cracks start to form. People start to break down. You make the slightest noise wherever you are. These vampires are going to find you. And they don't really use the word vampires as much as well. Um, in the novel as well, especially, which I'll get to in a moment. Which is good, I think. They are trying to put a new spin on the vampire genre. It has been, you know, done to death. There's been a lot of successful series, like Twilight again. I'm not going to bash any series that came before it or after it. But this really stood out for me because of the art, the story, and the fact that vampires were just really scary, really horrific creatures. There's no romance uh, unless you count, you know, the relationship between Eben and Stella, uh, the reconciliation from their past and the reasons why they kind of split up, that's all kind of rectified. But, yeah, this is a, an amazing story. So as far as I'm aware, there are 11 parts to this story. I have nine of them, as you can see here. I've got number one in my hands, all the way up to nine. There's a series of spin-off novels as well, which I'm going to talk about the first one in a moment. And, yeah, they are they are just incredible. So I'm just going to pick out some more art. Again, you know when an artist is great, when you can literally unplanned turn to a page or do a page spread and the artwork just blows you away. <laughs> what more do I need to say? It is gruesome, it is dark, quite childlike, as I said. The characters are not rendered perfectly. You're not looking at life-like comparisons here, but the textures, the grime in the background, the splatters as well, especially in this here inside his mouth, which I love, uh, quite reminiscent of Frank Miller. I also do a bit of painting on the side, and I love to incorporate splash and splatter textures in my paintings as well. I just think it gives it so much life and character to it. So this is 30 Days of Night, Steve Niles, Ben Temple Smith, just incredible. I'm not going to give away how it ends, but it's very gory. It's for a mature audience, definitely. Do not get your children or even some young teenagers who don't like gore and blood. Don't show it to them. This is for the uh, for the hardened reader who is used to this type of thing and um, who really enjoys it, basically. So I do as well. This is the first um, work that I picked up of Ben Temple Smith. I'm going to be looking out for his other work as well because his illustrations are amazing and I love finding artists like this because he also does um, cover art for different comics and graphic novels as well. So my friend Shane in Sin City Comics Combran put me in touch with another series as of yesterday. It was a comic series. I think it's only four issues called Victory City and on the cover it had Temple Smith's art and I, I just got really excited because, like I said, I love finding artists that I can point to and go, yes, that's him, that's his style. He didn't illustrate throughout. The illustration of, of the comic throughout was similar to Ben's style, but he just did the cover. And I just love picking out artists that I can point to and say, yes, I don't even need to see his name. I know that's him. So that is 30 Days of Night, the graphic novel. I will probably do a review of books 2 to 11 once I've read them. I want to collect them all. Um, I haven't got new copies. They're not pristine because they're quite hard to find now. I can't find them new anyway. 
but I'll do a review of those separately. I just had to get this out there. You have to pick up 30 Days of Night if you're a horror fan, if you love the vampire genre and you're looking for something just a little bit different within that genre, pick up this graphic novel. It is incredible. So that was the graphic novel version of 30 Days of Night. That came first. Then a film was released with Josh Hartnett playing Eben. And I think he played him really well. He was seen as a kind of heartthrob actor up until that point. It was very convincing. Marlowe looked incredible. The vampires themselves were rendered really well. So I suggest watching them in order because you'll know what's happening in each. So you start off with a graphic novel, then go and pick up the film. You can pick it up quite cheap now because it was very successful, but it was back in the day, so it's a relatively old film to go and check out. And then, if you want to explore the world even more because you love the story so much like I do, pick up the official novelization of the film. Now, this is by an author called Tim Leban, who I found out afterwards is from South Wales. Which is awesome, because that's where I'm from. So, yeah, he lived in Newport for many, many years. Now he lives in Goitra. And I don't think I've picked up any movie novelizations. Even though this is the official one, I had to pick this up because I love the story uh, so much. This is the first um, novelization of a film that I've read. And I've got to say, I was really, really impressed. It wasn't just a retelling of the story, which would have been fine. That's what I was expecting, to be honest, because the story is so cool. But Tim actually put a lot of kind of tense moments and emotions that you can't necessarily capture in films. Um, a lot of a lot of it focused on Eben. You know, Eben and Stella are the main two characters in it. Stella is an incredibly strong woman, very feisty. She has a will to survive, and it's good seeing her transformation from, oh, I don't want to be stuck in Barrow, I can't believe I've missed the last flight, to, okay, I really don't want to be in Barrow because all of this destruction and bloodshed is happening. And then she reconnects with Eben, and you see the story there, but it's not a mushy love story like, oh, they love each other again. It, they just become stronger together, and you start to see why they were so perfect for each other in the very beginning. So this is the novelization of the film, and I, I really enjoyed it. I mean, it's a small book, it's not that thick, and it's one of the shorter hype books as well, which is quite funny if you ask some of my friends, that does drive me a little bit balmy, that my book stand goes like this, and then down, and <laughs> back up again. But hey, that's life, you got uh, you got to put up with stuff like that. Tim did a brilliant job. I really did enjoy his writing. He's... Um, quite a prolific horror writer within uh, within his genres. He likes to uh, tell very dark sort of stories. I am going to check out his other work off the back of this book because I thought it was really strong. Like I said, he was able to add a lot of things into the story that you couldn't necessarily do in the film and to a certain degree the graphic novel because obviously graphic novels are very visual. So like I said, you might have a cell where you haven't got any narration, any dialogue, and because Temple Smith's art is so amazing, you don't really need it. But obviously with a book, you don't have any pictures, so you need to paint that description of the town. So I just thought I'd read uh, a quick passage from the book, just to show you the kind of tense atmospheres that are created. So, as he passed between the two houses, he heard the destruction coming from Helen's home. The vampires were breaking in and through the building, searching for him, perhaps sniffing out his trail. Once they realised that he had not gone to ground, they would be after him. A heartbeat, maybe a few seconds, and then they would come, and he was still several blocks from Rogers Avenue. This happens throughout. You were just like, run, for God's sake, run. It, it is a lot better than most of the horror films out there, to be honest, because I think that most horror films these days are quite formulaic, in the sense that they stop, they look around, they stop. If, if someone's after them, they just don't move. I'm like, run! For God's sake, run! Or they go into a building, and you're like, don't go in that building. You know there's bad things in that building. These survivors are very clever, and they're very resourceful, and they want to live. They don't want to die, so they're clever about it. They keep quiet. Just going to read one more passage, and then I'm going to sum up my review. I don't want to be like an old man just reading a story to you over YouTube. So I'm just going to read another passage just to really describe Eben's thoughts. And it's quite 
sort of cool to know that he's a sheriff. So he's like Rick Grimes from The Walking Dead. He has these responsibilities. He is an authority figure, but he's also vulnerable. And it's the vulnerability of these characters that really sings home to you, just like The Walking Dead. So here's another very short passage. Eben was terrified. Those things could be anywhere, on the roofs, stalking the land between houses, in the crawl spaces underneath. They could be sitting in windows waiting for careless survivors to walk by, or hiding in the abandoned vehicles staggered here and there along the street. Perhaps they had even buried themselves in snowdrifts, waiting there cold and silent for days until they smelt the meat or felt the heat of a body walking nearby. He had no idea. So he could move out there to the best of his ability, slow, cautious, or he could admit defeat and return to the attic. So I'm going to wrap up my review the 30 Days of Night graphic novel, then the movie, then the novelization. There are novels and graphic novels after that. So if you do need a list, comment below in the links and I will get a list for you. You have to read them in a certain order. For instance, the next novel after the novelization takes place after the third graphic novel. There's a short story in one of the annuals, which is technically book number three, and that dictates the plot for the second novel, which I know is quite confusing, but if you Google the running order as well, if you are interested, that'll give you more information. But I, I strongly urge picking this series up. Again, if you're a fan of The Walking Dead, if you're a fan of gore and survival and apocalyptic and vampires, pick this up, you will not regret it. Comment below, share and like and subscribe, I am truly grateful. I, this is my fourth video, I'm really, really enjoying this. I really want to build up a community and get some conversations going. What are your favourite horror books? What other books have you read by Ben Temple Smith? Or what can you recommend? Because I'm always looking to expand this growing bookcase behind me. So get in touch, and I will see you next time. Cheers, guys.